In the shadow of Buckingham Palace, secret cons and scams. The meal that isn't fit for a queen. On a crowded subway, pickpockets at work. The hooker who knows a secret her clients don't. Secrets of the Las Vegas casinos, where the loser takes it all. This is the real. And the street con that earns this gang $1,500 an hour. In 10 years, it's predicted tourism will be the world's biggest industry. It's already worth an incredible $453 billion a year. The average American family spends $1,800 on their annual vacation. But much of that money ends up in the hands of unscrupulous individuals who set out to rip off travelers. This program will uncover the secrets of their murky crimes, secrets every potential victim should know. The risks begin even before you set off. This is London Heathrow, the world's biggest international airport, used by over 62 million passengers a year. Behind the scenes, police suspect a group of baggage handlers are secretly doing rather more than their regular job. Using an x-ray machine, they search out which bags contain money and jewelry. Then they force the bags open and help themselves to the contents. Here, a man rummages through a pair of pants and manages to pocket a few coins. Calmly picking his way through another suitcase, this man finds more coins, then moves on and hits the jackpot. A wad of banknotes. Watch again as he makes sure the coast is clear before he slips the money into his pocket. For a finishing touch, the thieves remove any identifying labels. That way, the baggage will get lost. The owners will never see it again, so the crime will never be reported. But Heathrow's hidden camera ruins their scam. One of the men spots it and incredibly hopes to destroy the evidence, but instead gives the authorities a perfect mugshot. Amazingly, most secret luggage thefts happen in full view of airport crowds. Watch this thief. His target is the black briefcase on the back of the cart. Carrying a hold all, he carefully waits for the right moment. And seconds later, he's off with the briefcase tucked under his arm. The thief is actually already known to police. He's Edouard Bustamante, a Chilean national, and globe-trotting pickpocket and baggage thief. He used to come across with forged documents every year for the sole purpose of stealing, and he had convictions all over the world for stealing luggage and theft from the person pickpocketing. To combat a rising number of baggage thefts, hidden cameras are used to uncover the secrets of thieves like Bustamante. Here, he's waiting in line, or rather, waiting to steal the bag in front of him. He casually rests his hand on it, waiting for the right moment, then strikes. But sometimes, what's been stolen holds its own secrets from the thieves themselves. A previous time, Bustamante stole a briefcase from a London railroad station. Now, unbeknown to him, inside that briefcase were 350,000 pounds worth of negotiable bonds. But as he couldn't understand English and what the documents were, he left them in the briefcase, just stole the money, and, th and threw the briefcase away. When I interviewed him regarding it, he almost burst into tears. The world's master baggage thief had thrown away documents he could have turned into half a million dollars cash. Most busy places provide endless opportunities for thieves, but they know tourists are particularly easy targets. 
Well, I think a tourist, by very nature of the fact that they are on vacation, um, tend to be a little bit more vulnerable than they are during the rest of the year. Um, they are not working, so they're a little bit more relaxed than they would be if they were travelling, say, to or from work. Um, they're carrying perhaps probably a lot of money with them. They maybe have a camera, they have other things. They're distracted by all the new sights and sounds and things that they're seeing. And sometimes, as, as well, language is a problem. The thieves' secret is to catch victims while they're distracted. At another airport in Miami, Florida, a remarkable experiment is being conducted. Detective John Little is about to prove just how easy the thieves have it. He's deliberately taking passengers' bags to teach them a valuable lesson. Here's the man's bag, and he's still waiting in the queue, has no idea that his bag's gone. I've made it to the street, and he has no idea that his bag is not there. When the passenger notices their bag missing, Detective Little returns to hand it back, but with a warning message. I'm John Little from the police here. Do you mind if I talk to you for just a second? We were watching your bags while you were in the queue. Yeah, sure. And you completely took your eyes off of them. I did. I got all the way out to the street with the one suitcase. So do me a favor, leave one of you with the bags. Sure. I'd hate to see you lose your golf clubs. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was very, very surprised because, I mean, I was quite relaxed at the fact that we were in with nice people, for want of a better way of describing it, and uh, I was surprised he'd taken them and actually come back with them. In one day at Miami Airport, Detective Little stole and returned an astonishing 40 bags, revealing to their owners the secret of not suffering the same for real. London. Over three million Americans visit this fascinating city every year, a quarter of the total number of tourists. Many head for Soho, the bustling heart of London's entertainment scene, packed with trendy restaurants, chic bars, and clubs. But Soho is also the center of the city's vice trade, a massive secret industry worth almost $400 million a year and it attracts a certain special type of tourist. Behind the neon lights of erotic stores and peep shows are a secret con. The police call them clip girls. Well, there's a girl standing down there smoking a cigarette. That's about the prime position. She's just moving off now. Whether she's uh, seen somebody, uh, the uniform officer there. Clip girls pose as hookers, often working in pairs, offering sex for money but then one of them does a disappearing act. One will offer the service, another one will say, um, I'll just go and get the room and take the money, then she'll disappear, and then they'll come back later on and say to the guy that, uh, oh, she's been arrested, when they get the room, can we have another go, give me another 100 quid, 200 pounds, however much they think they can get. Here, two girls have picked up a client and walk off toward a hotel room, only, of course, they'll none too surprisingly disappear before they get there. Potential clients can be conned out of huge amounts. We've had a couple of thousand pound ones done before, although they'll take whatever they think is worthwhile, and they will go with them to the cash point machine and get the money out. Clients rarely tell the police because they don't want their secrets to come out. They know they've engaged in some uh, illegal activity, they're not going to go to the police, they're probably not even going to tell their friends and family, and also they're uncertain exactly what the situation is. They're in uh, a rather sleazy district of London, they're probably away from home. If they start to kick up a fuss, they're not quite certain what's going to happen to them next. So there's a number of elements that contribute to the con. So the secret attraction of this line of work for the Clip Girls is that as long as they don't actually deliver sex for money, the most they're likely to be arrested for is loitering the streets. When we searched her at the police station, um, she had 160 pounds on her, and so we asked her where she got it from, and that was what she'd earned so far this evening through clipping. At the police station, the latest clip girl made no secret of what she does, because she knew it can never be proved. Because obviously, um, the male victims don't substantiate the allegation. Normally she earns about 300 pounds in an evening. Well, she'll get arrested and um, her fine in court the next morning will be about 30 pounds, 30, 40 pounds. 
That's a fine of around $50, still leaving a healthy profit of $400 on the night. Only the clients have lost out. As well as clipped girls, there are more cons in clipped joints, unlicensed bars with a big secret. They claim to sell sex and booze. In fact, they sell neither. And there's yet another amazing con. While the services offered may not exist, the checks certainly do. Clients are faced with ridiculous demands and threats if they don't pay up. Basically, it's a ripoff. I can only assume that there were three people involved with this bill because they've paid for three pints of uh, alcohol-free lager, six double fizzy drinks, which um, don't contain any alcohol. Uh, for that, they've paid 720 pounds. 720? 720 pounds for six fizzy alcohol-free drinks. Uh, three hostesses, uh, and the total bill comes to £1,023.75. So I hope they had a good night. That's more than $1,500, an astonishing con. But it seems customers do pay, and not wanting to reveal their secret shame, don't make complaints. After the break, secrets of the New York gang who make seven and a half thousand dollars a day. And who would suspect a child of such a terrible secret? The nine-year-old pickpocket who's already been arrested more than 50 times. Hamleys in London, England. It claims to be the world's biggest toy store, 200 years old and selling 40,000 different toys and games. But a few streets away, there's a new bestseller, the Dancing Mickey Mouse. Perhaps not surprisingly, Hamleys wouldn't stock this toy, and it has no connection with Walt Disney, because it's a secret con. With a bit of trickery and cleverness by the seller, um, people are led to believe that the things have a sort of a, a life of their own, which clearly they don't. They're just a little piece of paper, probably worth tuppence, but sold for five pounds. That's eight dollars. A lot of money for a few pieces of cardboard. Filmed with a hidden camera, this con man explains how the toys dance. How, how do they work? My best is yours. Sorry? My best is yours. Oh, right. How much are they? It's the same amount. Oh, right. Oh, it's a magnet, you know? Oh, I see. Oh, that's a magnet as well. Yeah. Let's oh. put it to the speaker. Yeah? Oh, you've got to put it against the speaker? Yeah. Oh, see. OK. Of course, there's no such thing as magnetic power. In fact, this toy doesn't dance at all. Well, the way this con works is that, uh, as you can see, there's a little very fine piece of wire, fishing line, actually. People who are buying this, this, uh, this little item don't realize is there's a little gadget here in the box which is energizing them and making them jump up and down. What you've got here is a little audio recorder which has had the front of it removed and a little ring has been put on with a nail and then what happens is that pulls the string and makes the puppets jump about. This is not normally on view, this would be inside this box and if I turn this around you'll see that just here there is a tiny hole through which the string comes through the noise or slight noise which may come from the uh, small recorder turning round is drowned out entirely by the uh, audio player sitting down on the floor beside it. But the dancing Mickeys are a perfect souvenir for anyone who wants to remember how they were conned while on vacation. The scams aren't just on the streets outside stores. Here, crowds of shoppers enjoy browsing around this store's displays but many could end up parting with more money than they intend. At least, they would if it weren't for the security cameras, because among the crowds are secret bag snatch thieves. Here, the intended victim is the old lady with the purse on the left of the screen. The thieves are the two women on the right wearing scarves and cloaks. Notice how the woman in the blue cloak reaches over as if she's looking for something. The cloak covers the woman's purse, giving her partner the chance to reach in and steal the victim's wallet without her or any of the other shoppers noticing. 
these thieves need only a second to strike. It all seems a bit too easy for this man. No one's looking, and the wallet is his. Except in this case, he's being watched by secret cameras and promptly arrested. The bag snatcher here is the woman in the white jacket. She looks like she's shopping, but in fact, she's already seen what she's really after. Look how she spots the victim's bag on the floor as she walks past. As soon as the victim moves off for a moment, She's in. But again, it's all been secretly caught on camera. So this time, the scam doesn't succeed. Over in Streetwise, New York, those who cheat visitors work in gangs more organized, slick, and efficient than the city's biggest corporation. They make thousands of dollars every day. An expert on the secret methods of the pickpocket gangs is former New York police detective Lothal Crawford. You see a team of pickpockets steal. The lady in the black, her name is Jenny. Jenny's a teacher. It's her job to teach the other people with her how to pick the pockets. She's in there. The light hasn't turned green yet. The lady's waiting for the light. The people on side of her, that's the team. That's her teammates. They all have a part. She's still trying to get that money. Okay, the light's almost turning green. Bingo. She got it. She looks at it, she counts. The secret now is to split the money fast so that if any one member of the gang is caught, they don't have all the bounty. The lady in the white, she's a stall. She's going to stop short and hold him so that he can't walk anymore. And Jenny's going to go into his back pocket. Okay, there's the stall, the pick. Again, watch the woman in the white shirt. As Jenny slips her hand into the victim's pocket, the woman in front of him slows him down, causing a distraction ahead. And that gives Jenny plenty of time to grab his wallet and divide up the money. Thanks to their secret methods of thieving, this gang alone makes seven and a half thousand dollars a day. Coming up, secret cons on the sidewalk outside the world's most exclusive department store. Never mind about where they come from. Never mind about how I sell them. Harrods in London, the world's most famous and exclusive department store. Inside, an amazing array of luxury goods. The most expensive item is this $350,000 watch with 252 diamonds. But you can also buy a suit of armor for $7,000. Or a souvenir bear at up to $400. Too cheap. Am I going too cheap? But on the sidewalk outside Harrods, there are even more incredible secret sales taking place. Incredible for the way mostly tourists are being ripped off. Try it, come and try it there. Try it there. I tried it, come and try it. I tried it, I tried it last night. Billy Scott is one of many illegal street traders. He doesn't work for Harrods, has no stall or license, and openly boasts that his customers shouldn't ask too many questions. Never mind about where they come from. Never mind about how I sell them. Well, it's a massive problem from our point of view in terms of we're talking about the world's greatest and best known store, uh, which is being, the value of which is being greatly reduced by these parasites who are trading right on our doorstep. They even compare their prices with those of Harrods. Everyone loves a bargain, and that's the secret of a street trader's appeal. Most type of crime involves some kind of physical threat. So for example, if you're mugged uh, or if you're attacked, the person will obviously hit you uh, and take the money. With the con men, it's completely different. There, there's no physical aspect to what they're doing. It's almost entirely psychological. They're simply persuading you to freely give your money to somebody who is doing something illegal and actually not going to provide you with the services they're offering. Scott's sales pitch is drawing a crowd. His brand names, Eau de Plaisir and Primeval, seem strangely alluring. 
At four for $15, his customers look delighted with their bargains. The same women are back a few minutes later to buy more. But they're not customers at all. They're stooges, fake customers hired by Scott to pretend to buy his goods and con others into doing the same. In fact, they put the goods in a box hidden round the corner, then return to Scott to spend another $15. For your person who's never been to London before, never been to that area um, of Knightsbridge before, it all looks very, very convincing and, and they're going to give their money. At the end of the day, Scott gives his stooges their money back and their wages. Amazingly, he thinks all this is a charming old tradition. It's not just taking away hundreds of years of tradition. You're, you're taking away, you're taking away people's livelihoods. You're taking away a, a needed service to the area. A needed service to the area. You're taking away uh, something which, which on a whole, although mainly local residents don't like it, something which tourists, when they come into the area, they love to see. The age of London tradition that they're, they're carrying on is called ripping off people, nothing else. And that's not the only secret con outside Harrods. These women are selling what they claim is lucky Heather. Well, they are absolute parasites. Uh, an expression we use for them is mugging without touching, where they will approach uh, our prospective customers. They tend to pick on Japanese tourists, where they will produce a 10 pound note or a 20 pound note and show it to the tourist who believes by implication that that is the amount that they are required to pay. Again, tourists are the easiest prey. These two Japanese men appear to give an astonishing $75 each for a wild plant worth at most a few cents. Uh, we've had occasions where by they've actually put uh, their hand in the, in the wallet, taken that the whole contents are run off with it, or even taking the wallet and run off with it as well. There's nothing lucky about this Heather for victims. The secret of beating this con is just to walk straight past. London's black taxi cabs, traditional symbol of reliable travel, with fixed fares and cabbies willing to share their views on almost every subject. But not all taxis are the same. Gatwick Airport, near London. Police officers working secretly undercover are pretending to be newly arrived tourists looking for a cab. This driver has a secret. He doesn't have a taxi license. What he's doing is illegal, and if caught touting or approaching customers on the streets, drivers can face fines of up to $1,500. Do you want to go to London? I said, are you a taxi? Which he replied, yes. I said, how much? He said, 30 pounds. And that's when resting for defense of touting. Unlicensed taxis or minicabs have no meters and no standard fares. They secretly try to con passengers by charging outrageously high amounts. Here, an undercover journalist using a hidden camera is posing as a tourist. Yeah, uh, I want to go to this address. What SC1. Yeah, thank you straight away. Thank you. The driver spots an opportunity. His passenger probably hasn't been in the country long enough to have a grip on prices and doesn't speak good English, or so he thinks. How much is that? It's 35 pounds, please. 35? Yeah. Well, I know it's a short distance, that's what we charge. I'll tell you what, I'll reduce it to 20 because I should really charge, as you can see, saloon 35. I'll do it for 20 because it was a short distance. The driver begins by trying to charge the equivalent of over $50. The journey should cost about 10. I think I've only got 10 pounds on me. I was told it to be 10 oh, pounds. No, 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 no. We have to do it for 20, which is a reason for I can't do it for less. It's difficult to do it for us. How much would a black cab be? Well, depending which way you go and how they go, but uh, we have to, I mean, 20 pounds is a very reasonable charge, sir. I've only got 10 pounds on me. Oh, my goodness. This time, the driver has to settle for a mere double the normal fare. I thought that was, a, you know, 10 pounds was well, a fair uh, deal. No, no. Well, it has to be said, but what can you do? But some minicab drivers have much worse secrets to hide.
Here, police have discovered a potential death trap. The tires on this car are dangerously bare, with wire mesh poking through the rubber. The gas cap is missing, in its place a plug of paper. Just one spark and this taxi could explode into flames. The next minicab stopped is also a mechanical nightmare, in serious danger of losing a wheel. Watch what happens when I apply a little bit of pressure to it. The cars can be in absolutely any condition. I mean, you might be lucky to get one that's actually roadworthy, but nine times out of ten, they're not. Um, they could have bald tyres, um, no seat belts. Uh, the things themselves are falling apart. They could be in dangerous condition. I mean, they're just not the sort of vehicle to chance actually going in. Even the radio in this cab is a con. The secret is, it's a fake. There's no controller on the other end. I haven't got a radio. The microphone and the aerial, that's all I've got. There's no radio. It's just to make people feel more comfortable. When they get in, they, you know, they feel like it's more safe, so to speak. When they get in, they otherwise, sometimes they get in, they don't see a, a, a minicab radio, then they think maybe you're not a minicab and you're going to abduct them or something. So when they see that, sometimes you pretend to talk on it, you know, and it makes them feel much easier. It's a false sense of security. More than 200 of London's minicab drivers are prosecuted every year. Still to come, secrets of the Las Vegas casino cheats who give a whole new meaning to a good hand of cards. It's the gambling center of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Millions of dollars are won and lost here every night. But not every gamble is down to a hand of blackjack or a spin of the roulette wheel. There are secret cons and scams here too. The casinos themselves are victims, but so too are other players. Hundreds of high-powered cameras are used to catch the cheats. Casino cameras are the eye that never blinks. We are totally amazed at the, the technical ability of the cheats. Uh, there are some things that the camera can't comprehend, but there's nothing that the camera can't see. What we have here is a roulette game. We have a patron on the outside. He comes in and bets $5,000 cash. What you have is the dealer asking the gentleman, you sure you want to make the wager here? The man says yes and loses all of it. As the croupier checks his money, amazingly, he tries to grab it back. But he was caught, and because the money had become the casino's property, was charged with theft. The real secret of a casino con man is sleight of hand. A $75,000 jackpot is at stake here. Watch the players at the top of the screen. They decide to swap cards. A third man leans across to block the camera's view, but not far enough. Back at roulette, the croupier has called time on bets and set the ball rolling. Across the wheel, a man asks him a question, while a man at the top of the screen quickly places $500 on the number where the ball's just landed. Without the cameras, he'd have got away with a remarkable $17,500 payout. This man has won his card game, but before the dealer collects his chips to pay out, he adds more. First you see two chips, then you see five. The secrets of another scam revealed. Pickpockets practice their scams the world over. In London, one of their favorite spots is the maze of tunnels which make up the city's subway. Known as the Underground, or Tube, it carries three million passengers every day. And it has an alarming secret those passengers lose three quarters of a million dollars a year to pickpockets. You're being brushed against by legitimate travelers who are trying to get on or off a, uh, a train while you're trying to get on or off it. And, and often the last thing you're thinking of is the person who's brushed against you has actually got his hand inside your, your coat. One young man I asked, where is the best London underground station for picking pockets? And his reply was, Oxford Circus is the best place. It's because they put loads of posters up there which say, beware pickpockets. And as people walk past these posters, they check their wallets. And that's exactly what I need to know. An amazing 1,500 security cameras watch over the tube network. One of their major aims is to discover the secrets of a nasty con and catch those responsible. The team is led by undercover cop Kevin Walsh, seen here in the white undershirt. 
he spotted his suspect and signals to his colleagues that a pickpocket is about to strike. Secret cameras record what happens as the man takes a wallet, his hand hidden by the victim's coat draped across her arm. Once again, in slow motion. The thief dips into the purse and lifts out the wallet, with the victim remarkably unaware of what's happened. Constable Walsh takes a statement from the victim, while down the platform, his colleagues arrest the suspect. There's approximately um, 40 to 50 professional thieves that are operating on the system, and they tend to get away with anything up to half a million pounds a year. These two pickpockets are completely unaware they're being watched. The, the, the two suspects are, firstly, uh, one wearing an orange bright jacket, a, a white male, and the other male is, is a short black man who's carrying a carrier bag. With the bag as a shield, so they can't be seen stealing, the men are secretly working the subway. But what they don't know is that among the crowds are two more undercover cops. The man in the orange jacket takes up his position at the front of the platform. He'll block the path of the victim. The thief has had a quick look at the officer, but he's quite happy about it. And he's now moving up behind the intended victim. One officer is to his left, the other one's moving to the right. The carrier bag goes forward, and he's gone into the lady's bag. Watch again as the woman in the beige raincoat boards the train, not knowing what's going on behind her. The police pounce, and the pickpocket's secret is out. They struggle hard to escape. The second offender's actually been handcuffed to the railings within the train by uh, the officer in the Denons, and then together they both restrain him. As you can see, they're still fighting frantically on the platform. Both suspects are taken away to be charged. The two men were found guilty and sentenced to 18 months in jail. This gang has a secret that makes it more effective than ever. Who would suspect a sweet, innocent nine-year-old girl of being a pickpocket? Fortunately, the police know her secret. When we catch a pickpocket of that age, i.e. under the age of criminal responsibility, we can do absolutely nothing. The law says that they're incapable of doing anything wrong. So although we pick up this girl, I would say on average two or three times a week, committing these offences, we can't actually convict her. What are you doing on the system then, girls? They're trying to get home. What are you doing in Piccadilly Circus? Because you're running away from us. The girl makes no secret of what she does. And what do you do? Pickpocket. Do you do certain people or do you all... Is it quite easy? Foreigners. Foreigners. Amazingly, the girl has been arrested more than 50 times. Quite often, the parents would materialise, normally uh, quite late at night. And... Uh, would plead ignorance of their child's activities, would be um, theatrically kind of scornful, you know, you naughty boy, don't do it again, I've told you, etc. And invariably, as the child left the station, he'd get a clip around the ear for getting caught, not for committing the crime in the first place. Despite all efforts, London's police admit that pickpockets are a bigger problem than ever. They're planning a new crackdown, but meanwhile, the advice to passengers is still to take care. If you're travelling on the system, don't carry wallets in your back pocket, carry it in the front pocket where you can put your hand in it and make sure it's there all the time. And if, in the same way, if you're carrying a handbag, keep it in front of you, make sure it's zipped up. Um, if you are out in town shopping for the day, don't forget your own personal property and worry about your shopping too much, because at the end of the day, it's the, your handbag, your purse that the thieves are after. With the subway pickpocket secrets exposed, Police hope this is one con which should soon be almost wiped out. After the break, the secret kitchen at Buckingham Palace. And the con man who thinks this is a meal worth $30. This is London's biggest shopping area. There are over 300 stores on Oxford Street, and they take an amazing $20 million a day. But those practicing cons and scams don't do too badly either. Astonishingly, this gang can earn around $1,500 an hour. 
set up outside a busy subway station, they're selling perfume, this time counterfeit. The brands are familiar, Calvin Klein, Chanel, and Ralph Lauren, but the contents of the bottles aren't. That's what's inside the fake one, as opposed to the real thing here. I think you can quite clearly see that that's an entirely different product. They do make an effort to copy the perfume, but the substance they put in is just an industrial essence in an alcohol base. It doesn't have a fixer in it, the sort of uh, thing which costs so much money in the real perfume. Um, so within an hour or two, it will smell entirely different and really quite unpleasant. Legitimate uh, perfumes, uh, such as the Chanel here and Tommy Girl, will have gone through rigorous tests to ensure they can't hurt people. These kind of substances could have anything in them, quite literally, and could do you harm. The trade is illegal, but the gangs have their remarkable getaway down to a fine art. The perfume seller here has three accomplices. Here, here, and here. There are also other vital members of the team nearby. This young man's delivering stock from a safe hiding place and also collecting the takings. Lookouts are watching for police or trade officials. This woman here, and this man here. The pair of lookouts on the corner suddenly spot an approaching police officer. Word is quickly passed to the stall, and one of the gang takes the stock away. By the time the cop arrives, they're gone, and their secret trade is safe. Another gang down the street, another lookout raises the alarm, and amazingly, there's even enough time to finish transactions before disappearing into the subway. The woman tells disappointed customers not to worry. They'll be back in five minutes. Two more cops arrive, but now it's all quiet. Five minutes later, and the first gang are already setting up again. What makes the Khan even more effective is that the traders are seen as colorful characters, a bit of a joke. You've got Ralph Levine, you go boss. Tommy Girl, Chanel, Escape, Obsession. But the joke is on customers when they unwrap the secret contents of their boxes of This is the real stuff. Yeah, you can open it, smell it, can't you? Yeah. Okay. But it's barcoded, that's why, as well, you know. Ten pounds each. It's got the code on it. Try anything you like, oh, love. One customer attempts to return his purchase. Any one you like for 10, any three you like for 25. Hello, mate. Sorry to bother you. Um, my girlfriend bought this last week. Not a fast, we don't sell obsession. It's the one further up. We don't we sell, don't sell, no, sell no. obsession. The traders deny selling the perfume, though the same man was filmed doing exactly that just a week before. It was definitely here last week. No, it week, wasn't huh? because we don't sell obsession. I just told you we swap places. There's one just by the bureau. We don't sell obsession. We've done oh, it. Right. Listen, I can't get obsession. We don't Oh, I just said it. We, we can't get hold of obsession, but they do obsession. Oh, OK, all right. I'll have a word with them, then. And plus, we don't do stripy bags like we have blue ones. The excuse is it's in the wrong bag, but that's the bag they had last week. No luck there, so our customer tries to get a refund from the next stall down the street for the scent he bought there. Come on, ladies, come on, gents, have a try, look. I'm excited to bother you. Um, my, um, I bought some Chanel number no. 5 last week from a girlfriend. The experience is strangely familiar. They definitely used to sell it. Yeah, last Saturday? Um, no, Friday I think it was. And it's just, I mean, she says it's not right. We I just wonder if I got a job. Well, we've only no, just come no. here this week. We've only just come here. Another firm down there. It's a firm outside there, mate. That's They've been the here. We've only just come here from Wednesday. Oh, right. We ain't no, got no, Chanel definitely... long. There's another lot down there. Might right. have come from them. I definitely thought it. I remember buying it off this fella. Well, so we've got yeah, blue bags, boss. Well, look at them bags. Blue. And surprise, surprise, they've changed their bags too. It becomes apparent that the gangs are working together. Sorry, we can't do nothing a week later, I'm afraid. But the most astonishing secret is what's inside the branded bottles traders like these sell. All that was there was some spirit, a little alcohol, uh, a slight trace of essence, the smell, and the rest was pond water, and it still had flies and mosquito larvae floating in it. So, another great gift to take back from vacation, with a secret extra. Buckingham Palace, home of Queen Elizabeth II, is famous for its lavish state banquets, and less proudly, 
for its outside catering. These are London's hot dog bandits. As unlicensed street traders, they're operating illegally. Their prices aren't listed, but they've been known to con their customers, mostly visitors, out of anything up to $30 for just one hot dog. The amount of money that changes hands is, is quite uh, phenomenal, and that's why fining had no, no real effect. And obviously a lot of uh, effort goes into the monks themselves to make sure they, they keep their various pictures outside the palace. But the biggest and most horrific secret of this con is the bandit's makeshift kitchen. This filthy yard behind the palace is heaven for the bacteria that could wreck a vacation. Astonishingly, food is counted by dirty hands. Cigarettes are a vital ingredient. And oil stays on the hot dog carts uncleaned from day to day. There's very, very little hygienic preparation there. Um, as you can see, the trolleys are open to the elements. There's no wash hand basin, there's no hot or cold water. There's nowhere for them to clean their utensils. They don't care about the public and um, you know whether they're gonna get food poisoning or not. Amazingly, at the end of the day, leftover cooked sausages are put back in a box with uncooked ones to sell the next day. There's no refrigeration. And the hot dog bandits don't believe in waste. Dropped food is treated as a joke and picked up to be served later. One of these stands can make $1,500 a day. It's big business, controlled by secret gangs. When a local news program, London Tonight, set up its own stand, it was soon under threat. Go! Go away! Oh. What the f***ing what are you doing? I'm leaving four years here. You understand? Get Go! It's a big problem for you, Umay. You understand? Why is it a big problem for you? It's a big problem for you, Umay. Go, go, go. Masvana. Gang members call their boss by cell phone. I said you'll kill us if uh, Hello? it comes down. We had a stabbing. A person was stabbed in the lung with a large commando knife. He nearly died. One of them was um, threatened with a handgun, put up to his forehead and told to go away and leave the park because it was someone else's territory. And we also had someone arrested with a, with a machete. I'm going to be reporting you for committing the offence of offering for sale items in a royal park. The hot dog bandits and their stands are regularly raided by police and health officials. Sellers often claim not to speak English. Are these fresh, are they? No, they're not, are they? In one week alone, an astonishing 65 hot dog stands can be seized and destroyed. They cost $2,300 each, but the trade's so lucrative that the bandits can afford it. And bizarrely, police aren't able to take their food. It's packed away. Someone will be conned into buying these sausages later without knowing their secret. It seems wherever and whenever you go on vacation, there's always someone ready with a secret con. Nah, don't say that. This is not disgusting. I think they are common, these, uh, these things, and certainly I've traveled extensively throughout the world. Um, and anywhere, it doesn't even happen to be cities, it can be anywhere where there's a big um, collection of tourists, visitors, whatever you call them. Um, unfortunately, it seems to attract um, some low life with them as well. But tourism officials hope that armed with the secrets of cons and scams, travelers may soon be able to give those responsible their very own lifelong vacation.